So in this lab, we're looking at interferometry done with shear plates. The first example is a wedge shear plate where the plate has an angle between the first surface and the second surface, and the zero wedge shear plate has no angle between the two surfaces. Both of these interferometers work on the optical path difference of the different rays traveling, depending on if they're hitting the first surface and reflecting or they're hitting the second surface and reflecting. So when we look at different aberrations with the zero wedge shear plate, we see very distinct patterns as you can see here. And now if you look at astigmatism, the fringes are in a different orientation than these is because the shear separation is different. And if you look here, we can combine spherical aberration and defocus. Outside of paraxial focus, it looks like this, and inside it is here. If you combine defocus and coma, you see a pattern like this that separates towards the top. If we look at aberrations from the wedge shear plate, we see that defocus has these straight lines that are at an angle, and spherical aberrations look like an S shape. So our setup for measuring the wedge shear plate as, a, as it's with the purpose of an interferometer in this lab starts with our Heaney laser spatial filter, which expands the beam to our collimating lens, which is a two inch diameter, passes off our fold mirror, and then through our wedge shear plate, which we used flipped this way to measure our collimation, or to guarantee our collimation, and then we flipped it back around the other way so that we could see the uh, fringes resulting from aberrations. And so this is one of the test lenses we, we used, and we placed these at such that the uh, center curvature of the, of the mirror back here and the focal point of this lens are in the same location, and that provides a collimated beam coming out this way that we can see the fringes, which show us the aberration content. Here you can see the effect of defocus on the wedge shear plate going from outside to inside focus, and you can see that the fringes rotate. Next we see the effects of tip and tilt on the wedge shear plate. You can see that the tip adjusts the position of the fringes and the tilt does nothing. Finally you can see the effect of decenter on the wedge shear plate. You can see that all that happens is the fringes translate, but this happens in both directions. So here's our setup for using a non-wedged shear plate interferometer, which is represented by this plane parallel plate here. Um, and so we have a Heaney spatial filter expanded to this collimating lens of 300 millimeters. Then it passes through the paint parallel plate, which is serving as a non-wedge shear plate, and we can see observe the fringes on this viewing screen. Here you can see the effect of defocus on the non-wedge shear plate, and you can see that there's a null fringe, and going in, going out, we can see they're starting to become straight fringes going either way. You can also see that with the center and defocus, it's identical to just having defocus with the zero wedge shear plate. With the zero wedge interferogram, we oriented the lens so that we had the least aberrations with the planar side facing away from the beam. And here we can see we just have the null fringe. Now, when we oriented the lens to have the most aberrations with the planar side facing the beam, we had a lot of spherical aberration, which we could then uh, estimate the amount of aberrations using Jim Wyant's method. Now here, first we numbered the fringes. From right to left, we went 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we, using an image processing software, we found the X positions of each of those fringes, plotted them, found a best fit curve. We took those coefficients, and using those and his method, we were able to find the different amounts of aberrations. We found that there's one wave of spherical aberration, approximately seven waves of coma, minus 0.2 waves of defocus, and about two waves of tilt. Now, seven waves of coma sounds like a lot, and we're not sure that that's accurate, because this interferogram doesn't really look like what a coma interferogram should. Now, with the, with the collimation lens oriented for least aberrations, as we slowly add defocus, those fringes become vertical, and the more defocus we add, the fringes become closer together and they increase in number. Using Wyant's method to analyze this interferogram, we found minimal amounts of spherical aberration and coma, and we found about three waves of defocus and about five waves of tilt. This amount of tilt is larger than expected, however, it is definitely possible since we did not adjust the alignment on this table. Next, we used a wedge plate to analyze a test mirror. You can see even at best focus, there was still some spherical aberration. When we added defocus, the fringes rotated at some angle. When we added tilt, there wasn't much difference from the best focus. When we added tilt and defocus, it looks pretty much the same as the image with just defocus. We also used the wedge shear plate to analyze a test lens. Now, we found that decenter did not affect the fringes. However, we were able to find that there were approximately six waves of defocus and five waves of tilt, as well as a little bit of spherical aberration and a little bit of coma.